everyone is exposed everywhere, every time, to toxic chemicals. The big challenge is to try to minimize these exposures. It is in the food, the water, the environment, domestic pollution, industrial pollution. There's been an over 15-fold increase in uh, chemicals that are manufactured or imported into the United States since the 1950s. And that rise coincides with the rise that we're seeing in a number of different uh, chronic conditions. Doctors, as well as the public, they are totally unaware of the influence of environmental toxin on an individual. For example, there are a number of people dying of renal disease prematurely at the age of 30, 35, 40, because 20 years ago they were pumping agrochemicals and pesticides and it just went into the ground and spoiled the water supply. They didn't know what they were drinking and now they are suffering from renal disease. This opinion by FIGO is based on scientific evidence and it's really important that obstetricians and gynecologists who are the main physicians for women and women's health are informed about the facts. We have seen changes in cancer rates, thyroid disorders, miscarriages, large increases in ADHD, autism rates, deformities of the, the penis, such as hypospadias, decrease in sperm counts. At the 21st FIGO World Congress in Vancouver, 7,000 physicians, midwives, and healthcare professionals gathered to explore global trends in maternal and child health. A top item of discussion, how to reduce exposure to toxic chemicals worldwide. Testicular cancer was going through the roof yeah. across Europe. Right. You know, and the hard evidence like that is rubbed you know, well, wow, mm -hmm. this is serious. We can't expect cures. We need to be much more thoughtful about prevention. Many people just assume that chemicals must have been tested before they were released into the environment, and therefore they must be safe. And that really isn't the case. There are different times during development and also as a child, adolescent, and as an adult that individuals can be exposed to toxic chemicals that can change the course of development or the ability to reproduce or the course of a pregnancy and also can change human health, not only for the generation that is affected, but also for subsequent generations. The science, physicians around the world say, can no longer be ignored. There's been an explosion in our technological ability to measure industrial chemicals in people. And what they found was not just one, two, three, four, but dozens of industrial chemicals measured inside of people, in children and in pregnant women, so that babies are now being born pre-polluted with a number of different industrial chemicals that have been measured in cord blood. We've got to shift the burden of proof from the lay public, the scientists, the physicians like me, back to the chemical industry. The reality is there is no law in the United States right now that requires that chemicals be fully tested before they're used in products that come into our home, and so we're inadvertently exposing our children to a lot of these different types of industrial chemicals, and we're paying the price in terms of our health. In Scotland, Following the ban on smoking in public places, there was a 15% reduction in preterm birth. For very preterm children, it declined by 25%. This was much greater than any of us expected. And what it shows is that even very low level exposure to toxins can have a big impact on preterm birth. When lead in the United States was banned from gasoline, the lead levels in gasoline went down at the same time that the lead levels in children went down together. So what can you do? There are real things we can do to reduce exposures, but we have to engage and we have to do research and we have to have patients and doctors having this kind of counseling happen. The same way we counsel about birth control pills and, uh, you know, healthy diet and healthy lifestyles. There are some things that the patient can't control. A good example is air pollution. We know air pollution is linked to adverse health effects all across the lifespan starting with reproduction and development. But one person cannot stop air pollution themselves. Pesticides in various uh, foods, as well as uh, the injection of hormones in uh, the animals. Ultimately, anything which is chemical is going to affect the health uh, of uh, women and children. Giving a voice to the people who are, who are kind of in the, in the trenches. So the, the workers who are working with pesticides and have no masks, 
they can be given a stronger voice. Physicians and other healthcare professionals are needed on the front lines of this effort. This is, as I said, a very big task in teaching to our future obstetrician gynecologist. If they know this in the school, in the resident school, in the school of medicine, I think that this will change the impact of environment toward ourselves and ourselves toward the environment. And we'll be more respectful at the end. This is a global problem that needs a global solution, so it's time to act on a uh, global scale. I'm really hoping that our generation of doctors will take on the issue of environmental health so that we can see healthy babies and healthy moms for generations to come.